Oh, almighty deed is the Pokemon commenter community. Please grant me some material that I may riff for comedic purposes and- <laughs> So this guy is named Supra. He's a Poketuber, and I've seen a couple of his vids. They tend to be good. However, this list is why some Pokemon don't deserve a Mega Evolution. Needless to say, just raises too many questions. Mega Evolution is a bit of a middle ground for me. I like the idea of empowering Pokemon, especially those that got left in the dust. Damn it, Flycon, you deserve one! Oh, right, the video. Coming in at number 5 is Lopunny. Although I really do like the design and new typing of Lopunny through its Mega Evolution, there are a couple things that really irk me with this Pokemon. This Mega Evolution seems like it came out of nowhere, and I really don't like that. This Pokemon does not do anything to either X and Y or Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire's story. First of all, of course it wouldn't have an effect on X and Y. It wasn't introduced in those games. You can't even get it in those games. Secondly, came out of nowhere? Uh, that's a pretty nebulous statement there, man. What does that even mean, and- Do not question the higher level YouTuber. Also, no important trainers such as gym leaders, bosses, or Elite Four members have this Pokemon. The only Elite Four member that has a low punny is Flint in 4th gen, but in 4th gen, Mega Evolution doesn't even exist. So you say none have that Pokemon, then prove yourself wrong in the next sentence. Perfect logic! But in all seriousness, why should being related to the story be a determination for whether or not Lopunny should have gotten a Mega Evolution? If that's the case, shouldn't Heracross or Pinsir be here? Heracross is a little shaky, but like with your example with Lopunny, Heracross was only used by a single in-story trainer, Aaron from the Elite Four, also in 4th gen. Now, if you want to get really technical and just go with what trainers use and not evolve, that would include Beedrill and Pidgeot, since they weren't used in higher tier battles. Pokemon really only stays relevant in the competitive scene, where it is currently in the OU tier, but outside of that, this Pokemon doesn't see much light. And that's why I got a Mega Evolution. Tons of Pokemon who got Mega Evolutions were considered useless in the competitive scene. Sceptile, Pinsir, Heracross, Ampharos, Kangaskhan, and Mawile, just to name a few Pokemon, as well as Lopunny. Hence why a Mega Evolution gave new life to these Pokemon to be used by those who actually gave a damn about the competitive scenes but wanted to use different Pokemon. So I'm going to give the number 4 slot to a Pokemon that I'd really like to use in the competitive scene before its Mega Evolution. This Pokemon is none other than Medicham. Now unlike Lopunny, Medicham is not correlated into the storyline of X and Y or Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. In fact, the only important trainers to have a Medicham are Candice, Lucian, and Chuck when you rematch him in Heart Gold and Soul Silver in the Sophron City Fighting Dojo. But in the generations of these trainers, Mega Evolution is not a thing yet. Again with the story complaint. How does that actually make it so a Pokemon shouldn't have a Mega Evolution? Riddle me this, Batman! <laughs> Seriously, I would love an explanation for this, since while yes, Mega Evolution is a key part in the latest games, most of the Pokemon that can Mega Evolve don't necessarily play a vital role in the games. Really, the only ones that do are the Stars and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, the Kanto Stunners and X and Y, the Eons, Rayquaza, Obama Snow, and Lucario. I'm not counting Groudon and Kyogre, since those two are classified as primal forms. But in any case, those are the only ones that can actually play a part in the storylines of the games when it comes to Mega Evolution outside of battles. I think if they gave Mega Metachamp a different ability besides Pure Power, which it already gets, I would feel a little bit different. This Pokemon honestly just doesn't seem different from its original form. Well, according to Small God, thanks to Mega Evolution, Metachon gets bumped from being rarely used to the OU tier. And thanks to the stat boost and the ability, it gives Metachon the highest attack stat in its tier. So while you feel it is indifferent, one look at the stats will tell you otherwise. So yeah, you're ignoring the stat boost that make this Pokemon a contender in the competitive scene. Now number three is probably going to make a lot of people mad, and number three is Charizard, but specifically Mega Charizard X. Now before you get all upset, let me explain. Since this Pokemon came out, I've always saw it as a fan pleaser rather than anything. A lot of people love shiny Charizard, so what do they do? Make it black. A lot of people think Charizard should be Dragon type because it looks like one, so what do they do? Make it Dragon type. What's wrong with pleasing the crowd? I may not like Charizard myself as a whole, I think it's overrated. I can understand why people would want to have it have a Mega Form. Charizard is one of the most iconic Pokemon, probably after Pikachu. It's on one of the very first Pokemon titles, had a much bigger role in the anime, and has been only Arceus knows how many trainers first poke it. Do not take my name in vain! 
what I do like about Mega Charizard X is that it correlates with the short four episode anime series called Pokemon Origins. In the last episode of Pokemon Origins, Charizard Mega evolves into Mega Charizard X and battles a Mewtwo. Now don't get me wrong, Charizard X is badass in this scene, but honestly, Charizard Y would have worked just as well for this scene. Actually, looking from the scene, Charizard used a lot more physical moves than his special moves in the anime. And during the Mewtwo fight, this tough plus ability would have given it a much more advantage. Now for the number one spot, I'm gonna give it to Obama Snow. Now this Pokemon actually plays a role in the storyline of X and Y. There's actually an event where Team Flare is trying to catch an Obama Snow and you have to save it, which is pretty cool. A Pokemon that actually manages to have a role in the story where you use the lack of one as a role for your key point and your arguments for the other two entries is number one. <laughs> But what I really don't like about this Mega is that the Mega Evolution is supposed to really benefit a Pokemon. And want to know one of Obama Snow's biggest flaws? The fact that it is weak to seven different types. With Obama Snow's Mega, they fixed some of its poor stats, but didn't fix the actual problem. So now we just have a better version of a Pokemon with seven weaknesses. Could've been worse, you know. They could've given the Pokemon more weaknesses, like how they did with, oh, say, Gyarados, Sceptile, Ampharos, Lopunny, Pinsir. All those Pokemon gained weaknesses while a lot of other Mega Evolutions also retain their original weaknesses. And I'm gonna end the video here. It certainly wasn't a bad video, but a lot of the reasons why you thought these Pokémon should have gotten a Mega Evolution seemed off to me. These Pokémon were some of the most underpowered Pokémon on the scene and needed a buff. Charizard, despite being a fan favorite among the crowds, was a pretty weak Pokémon, and with two Mega Evolutions, had to actually allow the Pokémon to be, have a wider way of uses to use it. Frankly, there are Pokémon that are really overpowered to begin with and didn't need a Mega Evolution. Mewtwo, Lucario, Rayquaza, and Blaziken were already powerful Pokémon to begin with, but they got a Mega Evolution just to break them even further. Hell, when we get more Megas with Sun and Moon version, you know we're gonna- there are probably gonna be a lot more Pokémon that shouldn't or shouldn't get one. Like, say, a certain godly- I, 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 I DIDN'T EVEN SAY YOUR NAME!